sometimes we know we have a normal or approximately normally distributed uh, population of some sort. In this case, we're going to look at green sea turtles. So let's suppose that they have a mean or an average lifespan of 60 years and a standard deviation of seven years and that the um, distribution of all green turtle green sea turtle lifespans is approximately normal so uh, we have a just a generic normal curve here but we could certainly uh, fill in some information on that curve so we could say okay well we've got uh, 60 as our mean and then each of those uh, marks to the right and to the left should increase by 7 for our standard deviation so we go up 67 74 and so on. Um, I'm not going to fill in all of them because this is sort of the the region that is most uh, useful for this particular problem. So what we're interested in here is looking at um, living at least 70 years. Okay well that's not exactly 67 or 74 so that's somewhere kind of in between. So we're looking for the shaded region here. So we're figuring out okay what is the probability of landing in this shaded region. So there's a, a couple ways to walk through this problem. Uh, one is to find our z-score and then use a table. So we could certainly say well I know that my z-score just requires me to figure out well how far is my observation of interest so 70 how far is that from the mean so 70 minus 60 right? and it should be positive because it's 10 above the mean and then we're going to divide by our standard deviation of 7 so we could have something like this and uh, then use a table once we find this and make sure we're shading in the right direction to find that value so we could absolutely do that right? so we would get 10 over 7 you can also say okay cool let's use our calculator if we want to have uh, if we are using the table we're going to need to know what that is to a couple of decimal places so 1.4286 I'll just go to, to that many places so we could find a z-score that way um, the other thing we can do though uh, with that z-score or without is we can use our calculator. Our calculator knows this distribution, has been programmed for it, so if we click on second and then go to vars, variables, above that we see distribution, so it sounds about right, we're dealing with a normal distribution. And sure enough, one of the first things that, that might jump out to us is normal PDF, normal CDF, we see norm here for inverse norm. So we actually want the second one, normal CDF. So it's going to ask us, what is our lower bound? So that means for the shaded region, what's our lower bound? Well, there are a couple ways to do this. So if we have a, a z-score, that means we have standardized what we're doing. So we're using a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Or another way to say this is we are 1.4286 standard deviations above the mean. So we could use that value. We could say 1.42, oops. We could say 1.4286, and that's rounding a little bit, but it should be okay. Um, the upper bound, since we're going all the way to the right, we're just gonna put in a large number here. So we could say something like 10,000 should be fine. And then mean of zero, standard deviation of one. So we have already standardized it. That's what a z-score is doing. It's just putting it into a number of standard deviations. So if we've done that, um, we can paste this. Now, if you don't have this screen in your calculator, it's still going to want the same items, lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation. So it'll look something like this. Let me scroll to the left so you can see. So it will say, hey, we want a normal CDF. And again, it's important we use CDF, not PDF. And so it'll just ask for the lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. So we could scroll through all of that to look at, at those various pieces. So you would just enter those manually. But anyway, if you hit enter, we're going to get this. It's going to give us the probability as a decimal, 0 0.07655, so on. So this means approximately... 7.656 percent.
Um, another way to do this though is without doing the z-score, if we go back to second and then variables to get that distribution, go down to normal CDF. The other way to do this is just to use the original information. So for the shaded region, our lower bound, right, where did we want to start is 70, at least 70 years. So 70 is a lower bound. We could still probably be safe with 10,000 as an upper bound that's really far to the right. Um, but now our mean and standard deviation need to change. So for this curve, the one that we drew out, right, the information, the raw data we have, our mean was 60, our standard deviation was 7. Now it shouldn't matter as long as everything is consistent. So whether we use the raw data or the standardized data. So I'm gonna paste this, hit enter. Notice that we get the same number that we got last time. So either way, we're looking at our probability is 0 0.07656, right? Approximately the same. The only reason those would differ is because I had rounded our lower bound the first time around, but they're the same to the first four or five decimal places. So that's that's pretty safe bet for what we need. And remember, it'll give it as a decimal. So if you want to see this as a percentage, move the decimal two places right. So 7.656%.